Good morning. Thank you for tuning in to Speak the Word broadcast this morning. I am your host, Prophetess Jacqueline Price, and I'm so delighted to be with you to share the good news of Jesus, to let you know Father loves you and he is truly fighting for you. Amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're rejoicing and being exceedingly glad in it. And I want to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast on, on Periscope and also on Blog Talk Radio. And today, I just want to talk to you about the Word of God. I want to talk to you about the importance of letting your light shine and, and removing the dimmers off your lights so that God's people, so that the world can see that you truly do love Jesus and that you truly do want to walk in his ways and be obedient to what he's called you to do. Amen. So I want to teach you, and we're going to be talking from the book of John. I'm going to be in the book of actually Matthew, and we're going to go into John. But it is an, it's just time for the body of Christ believers who say that they love God, that they're called by God, that they're saved to live like you're saved. When you have dimmers on, and we know what dimmers are, dimmers are meant to, to what, adjust the light, amen? Dimmers are meant to just lower the light. But if you are a true believer, the Bible tells us, Jesus said to let your light so shine so that men may see what your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. And I want to read this from uh, Matthew, looking at Matthew, the fifth chapter, going to the 14th through the 15th verse. It says, you are light. You are the light of Christ. And it says, and you're the light of Christ to the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. And the Bible says in the 15th verse, nor does a, anyone light a lamp and then put it under a bushel, but put it on a lampstand and it gives light to the whole entire house. Amen. So since we are the light of the world, the Bible says we're the light. And if we're the light of the world and we know we're the light, it's our job to let our light shine. It's our job to let our light shine, not to have dimmers on our lights. What I mean by dimmers, when you have dimmers on your light, you're saying, I, I know I'm a child. Yeah, I know what God called me to do. I know that I am a Christian. I know that I'm a believer, but there ain't nothing wrong with doing this. There ain't nothing wrong with doing that. Then that lets me know that you're lowering the dimmers and you're putting dimmers on your lights, rather, so that people, you want to do your own thing. You want to be a part of the world. The Bible says, if you're a lover of the world, you, you hate God. Well, prophetess, I don't love the world. Your actions demonstrate whether you love the world or not. Amen. So the Bible tells us that we are light. We're meant to shine, darlings. We're meant to shine. But one thing I've noticed in the body of Christ, everybody wants to be like the world. The Bible says, no, you're not. We're peculiar people. We're, we're chosen and he called us and he brought us in and we're peculiar people. But we, it seems like the body is uncomfortable being different. When I was growing up, you know, uh, nobody wants to be the oddball. I didn't have a problem with being different because, hey, that was me. People always, yeah, you want to be liked when you're a kid, you want to be liked, but the most important thing about it is this. You may want to be liked, but what about being, enjoying being that different person that God's made you to be? So the Bible tells us again in Matthew, you don't put your light under a bushel. You put it on a lampstand where it can be seen. I'm telling you, in this 21st century, we don't put dimmers on our lights so people can't see. Unless you're trying to hide something, unless you're trying to say, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. I don't want to shine for Jesus. You've got to make up in your minds that you really want to be a light for Jesus, a light for God. See, when we understand this, we can do some things for the kingdom. But see, I want to show you something. By us not allowing our lights to shine, Satan's taking the opportunity to what? Come in into the body of Christ. Come in and there's division. Nobody wants to hear sound doctrine anymore, the scripture lets us know. People want to just, just tickle my ears. Don't tell me something that is going to bring conviction to me. But the Bible lets us know that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to let you know what God is saying. 
Well, prophet is price. I tell you, it's different today. The day is it's different. It's not like it was in your day. See, why does everybody want to say it's, it wasn't like, it's not like it was back then. This is different. No, it's not. There's nothing new under the sun. And, but people want to make it seem like all of a sudden everything's so different. You know, everybody wants to conform to the world. And God's told us, don't be conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, the scripture tells us, by what? You got to renew your mind. If you want to be, and you say you are, that believer, that Christian, that saint of God, your life should reflect that. You shouldn't cast a shadow over yourself. You shouldn't have dimmers on your body, on your light, where you are afraid to stand out on your, in your, at your job. You're afraid to be seen at your job. Oh, no. Okay. What? If somebody says something about Jesus or says something about uh, a Christ in some way, it may not be an offensive way. It might be just a conversation. Are you afraid to say amen to that? Or, oh, yeah, I agree with that. Oh, yeah, that sounds wonderful. You are light. And people, the Bible, you know what Father told me? He told me, he said, daughter, he said, the church is not letting their light shine. They're afraid to let their light shine. Not even, they don't want to let the light shine on the job. They don't want to let the light shine anywhere. They have dimmers on the lights. And we're called to be believers who share the word of God. But compromising has taken place in the body of Christ. Uh, compromise, compromise. Nobody really wants to stand for righteousness. And then when you have a, a, a pastor or a leader or whomever starts a prophet or a prophetess start talking about compromise, people, I don't want to hear that. Ain't nobody compromising. How are you living? How is your life living? Are you a true representative of Jesus Christ? Jesus said in his word, we are to let our lights shine so men can see the good works that we're doing for Father and glorify him. It's not for you to get pat on the back. It's not for you to get the praise. It's for him to get the praise. So, so much compromising is going on that people don't want to really stand for holiness. Holiness is it's not just, oh, and oh, we got to be holy. It's a lifestyle that you live every day. Our speaking in tongues, our, our speaking in, an, uh, in tongues is a reflection of the holiness, of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You got to understand that you must want to be holy. Jesus said, God said, be holy for I'm holy. But for some reason, the church is backing away from what Abba said. Let me show you something else. I told you he said they don't, his people are afraid or they don't want to or they're ashamed to represent him on the job. They, you become standoffish. You, oh, no. Uh, well, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about what God? what the prop, prophet said about this, or what do you think about the, the message, or what did the pastor say? Oh, I see you reading your Bible. See, let me show you something. People can see you with your word. You can have your Bible on your desk or in the corner of your desk or whether at your cubicle. And, oh, oh, I see you read your Bible. That's an open book, right? Open opportunity to share Jesus. Yes, I do. Well, I, I, and, and that person may need an encouraging word at that moment. Are you going to be a bold believer and stand up and say, yes, I want to share something with you. Do you mind if I pray with you or you see someone and God could be talking to you to go and share a word or an encouragement to somebody? Are you afraid to stand out and move on and say what God says? Oh, prophetess, but I, I just don't be sure sometimes. Sometimes I'm thinking it's me or it might just be me. It's The Bible says it's always good to do good. You have Yes, we have to use wisdom. Somebody, well, you got to use wisdom. You just can't go do this. You just can't say that. You working for the man. You are working for the man. You are at your, at your job, but you have to use wisdom. If Father is pulling and tugging on your heart, 
Oh, come on up in here. And he's telling you to go and, and, and encourage somebody. You can say, you know, if it's a young lady, uh, do you mind if I talk to you? Can you meet me in the ladies' room? And I want to talk to you about something. When I was working, and it's been 17 years since I've, I've worked, but when I was working and God would lead me to and direct me to pray for somebody, I would use the wisdom that he's given me. Oh, do you mind if I, I talk to you for a minute? Uh, or if they're out in the hall, you know, I, want, I would like to pray for you. Do you have an opportunity? Do you have a moment? Or do you mind if I pray for you? People will not turn down prayer. Hello. If they're in need in their spirit, they're dealing with something in their spirit, man. They are going to accept that prayer. I recall I was in the, in the grocery store uh, on last year and I was just minding my own business. And, and I'm walking down the aisle and I see this lady and, and I see that she's got some issues, uh, struggling with some issues. And she was limping and, and I could tell that she had been dealing with something physically. And... I was just minding my business and I heard the Holy Spirit so clear say, stop now and pray for her. And I asked her, I said, do you mind if I, do you mind if I pray for you? And she said, oh no, not at all. I wasn't loud. I was obedient to father. He told me to lay my hands on her leg and pray for her. And I did that and loved her, went on about our business. You understand? And see, the beautiful thing about Father, what I love about him is this. He will make room. He will make space. He will make time. Nobody was on the aisle with us. It was just she and I. Nobody was looking our direction. It was just she and I. God is so amazing. He just wants you to be light. Come on, darling. You got to start being light. You got to start. Remove the dimmers off your lights and start shining like Jesus wants you to shine. How will men know Jesus if, we're if we refuse to shine? How will men know that God will save and set free if we're, if we're ashamed to share and testify of the goodness of Jesus? Amen. Let me show you something else. Compromising. I think about when Paul had to call out Peter. And you can find this in Galatians 2 and 11 through the 13th verse. Here, here we have Paul who said, look, I, when we got to Antioch, I had to, I had to call out Peter face to face because of something I saw him do when they were somewhere else. Let me read it to you. This is what it says in the 11th verse and 2nd chapter of Galatians. But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. So look at what is being said right now. Here's Paul saying, I had to, to call out my brother Peter. I had to call him out because I noticed something that he did. He come, he, what he ended up doing was he decided that, oh, at first he's eating with the Gentile believers. But after some of the friends, Jewish people came on the sign, Jewish believers came with James, all of a sudden he shifts. He shifts and Peter makes a statement. He says he was afraid of criticism. Peter said, Paul said Peter was afraid of criticism. People will compromise, take down because they don't want to be criticized. This And Father told me that. He said people will not, they don't want to, you know, they want to, okay, fit in. They don't want to be criticized. I don't want nobody talking about me. My question is, who cares? Who cares if people talk about you? I love what Jesus said. This is what I just love him with my soul. Jesus said this. He said, you're no greater than your Lord, okay? They talked about me. They persecuted me. You're not greater than I am. You're a disciple. You're not greater than your Lord. 
So expect it. Don't trip. Don't get mad. Enjoy it. Oh, they talked about you. But no, see, when you are, when you have a, you're a person, you got dimmers on, and you're not letting your light shine, and, and, and you want to compromise, and you don't want criticism, and you don't want to stand out, of course, you're going to take down. Of course, you're going to take down. The Bible tells us to stand for righteousness, stand for holiness. In the last days, we already know that people are going to be lovers of themselves. They don't want to hear sound doctrine. We already know this. We already know this, but I want to show you something else. I want to show you something here. In Matthew, the 12th chapter, uh, the 22nd to the 28th verse, Jesus makes an awesome, awesome statement. He's here and he's, he's casting out a demon out of a, a, of a, a dumb, uh, muted man, blind and muted man. And he's casting out this demon out of this man. And the Pharisees are rebuking him. They're looking on. They're rebuking him. And they're saying to G, saying that he's not the son of God. He's casting out the devils by Beelzebub. But I love Jesus. You got to be just like, you have to want to be just like him. You got to say, look, I'm not, I want to be just like Jesus. I'm not going to trip. I want to be just like Jesus. Look what Jesus says. And that 20, and that 25th verse, he says this, knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, any kingdom that is divided against itself is being laid waste and no city or house divided against itself would continue to stand. If Satan cast out Satan, that is his demons, his kingdom, his kingdom won't stand. How can his kingdom stand if he's going to cast out the cast out his demons? His kingdom will not stand. He says, if casting, if if I cast out demons by the help of Beelzebub, okay, come on, Satan. He said, but whom you do your sons drive them out. How do your sons drive them out? So my point I'm making here is this. Jesus is saying. If a kingdom is divided against itself, it won't stand. If the Bible says if a house divided against itself, it won't stand. Jesus said this, made that statement. A house divided against itself, it will not stand. Let me show you what the enemy has done in the body of Christ. The father told me, he said, the church is divided. The church is divided. The church is divided on salvation. And now everybody believe, oh, everybody going to heaven. Everybody going to heaven. My question is this. If everybody's going to heaven, if everybody's going to be with Jesus, then why are saints of God, why are we living so hard? Why are we striving so hard? If everybody can go and do their own things, say their own things, live their own, any kind of life, and we all end up in the same place, then why are we, why are we doing this? Why is the preacher preaching about living righteously? Why is the why is the leaders teaching about being holy? If everybody's going to heaven, don't believe the lies that the enemy has set in place to bring distractions and disruption to to you, a believer. See if you keep your you move the dimmers off of your lights and start shining so people can see. People won't be confused. Father, he was letting me know. Lifestyles. Lifestyle, saints. Look at this. People are having lifestyles. The church is divided. It has a difference in views on lifestyle, on salvation. Look at this. On salvation, on heaven and hell. I did a little research and I found out there's a, there are, the, the church is divided. There are percentages where the church is divided on same sex marriage, on, 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 uh, salvation. Everybody going to heaven. Church divided on, some believe that there is a heaven. For them, and some believe that, you know, some believe there is a hell. Some don't believe. Some believe everybody, like I said a moment ago, everybody's going to heaven. 
The church is divided. But see, you got to understand the work of the adversary. And see, when you when you have dimmers on, you can't see what the enemy is trying to do. The Bible says he's blinded the eyes so that they cannot see. And my father said to me, the church has got blinders on. The church has got blind. They're not seeing. They can't see. They're compromising. They're so full of compromise that they cannot see that the enemy has brought division in the church. You can't see it because why? You got your dimmers on. If your light was shining, if you're really calling on Jesus and living passionately for him, now, somebody going to think I'm judging you, but you live right and you won't have to think about being judged. You live holy. You don't have to worry about all that. Your life, God says, reflect me. Father wants you to reflect him. Jesus wants you to reflect him. The Holy Spirit is here so you can reflect the, reflect the Trinity. Amen. My God, the church is divided against itself. Okay. And they can't see it. The church is blinders on. Why? Because, the, see, Satan think he's slick and the leaders have got to rise up and stop falling for the foolishness. Stop trying to make your name be great and uplift his name. Make his name great. Stop trying to make you be all of that. One thing a friend of mine said before she went to be with the Lord, and it's just so true, she would teach it and preach it all the time. Ain't nobody great but God. That was her quote. Yes, she said, ain't nobody great but God. And that's the truth. If everybody stopped trying to be this, all of that, and just be holy, we can get some people saved for the kingdom. If we would live righteous, we could see the Bible says in this last days there will be a great falling away. The falling away is because people have dimmers on the lights. The falling away is because people have compromised. The church is compromised. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with that music. There's nothing wrong with having that in there. Oh, and there's nothing wrong with that particular dance. Now, let me tell you something. I don't have a problem with praise and worship. I don't have a problem with praise dancing. But you have to understand, if you brought some world into that dance, okay? Because we know the word of the Lord says, dance before me. But you got to understand, the enemy thinks he's slick. He's going to filter in some things. And you have to be wise, men and women of God, preachers. You've got to be wise and say, look, let me pray about that. No, that's not what Father wants. No, that's not what we are all about. Not God has no problem with you praising and dancing. He says, dance before me. I like to dance before Father. But the thing is, you cannot compromise. Don't bring the things of the world into it. Let me show something. Share something with you. You remember when the, uh, I think it was the Philistines. When the Ark of the Covenant was was uh, brought in into the camp of the Philistines. And they had all their gods around and, and, and they put the Ark of the Covenant inside the, in their temple area. I'm paraphrasing it. And they put that Ark of the Covenant in there. And they had their gods standing in, in there, in their temple. God says, I will have no other gods before me. We know what the Bible says. Every time the priest went in, an arm was missing from, the, from their God. These are statues that they built. An arm was missing. Long story short, in the final end, the head was cut off. God is so powerful. He is so amazing. He says, no other God before me. Father told me this. He said, daughter, my people have put gods before me. They're worshiping gods and they don't know it. They're worshiping gods. You're worshiping gods and you don't know it. You, you won't give God his 10%. You're lying. Wonder, stop doing that to father. And you want him to bless you. You want him to work things out, but you don't want to be obedient. You want to live in this world and you want the world to like you, but you won't stand for righteousness. You won't stand for holiness. You won't obey and be obedient to Jehovah. I love you guys. It is grieving father because he has people. And then you say, oh, ain't not, oh, you can live. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with their lifestyle. We got to learn to start loving people. The church has become so biased against this. The church has become so biased against that. Well, read the Bible. Stop 
stop trying to change this word to fashion you or fit your lifestyle. Line your hips up with this word. And the word of God is true. He said, let Paul, I think it was Paul who said, let every word of God be true and every man be a liar. So what you saying, if it's not truth, if it's not lining up with this word, you're lying. Love this life that God can be also pleased. Think about this. Think about the day that we have to stand before Jesus Christ, stand before our Heavenly Father. And you standing there, and he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. But Jesus, I did this for you. You didn't do that for me. You did that for you. But Jesus, I did that for you. You didn't do that for me. You work of iniquity. You did it for you. You did it for you. Jesus put it this way. He said the Pharisees, when they fast, he even told us someone fasting. When you fast, wash your face. You know, don't go out there appearing like you're fasting. Don't be like the Pharisees. The Pharisees always have to be on a show. I got a show. I got a show. I, I got to show my religion. I got to show this. I got to live holy and your light going to shine. Live righteously and your light's going to shine. I recall uh, my, my, one of my cousins many years ago. She's now saved, living a beautiful life and loving Jesus. Just loves God so much. But many years ago, this is, oh my God, some, I don't know how many years before she got saved, uh, my grandmother had passed away. Or my, my mom's mother had passed away. And we were at my mom's, my grandmother's home. And we were just sitting around laughing and talking. I was just enjoying my family. You know, I didn't, I didn't get all worked up and tripped because they had their beers and everything. That didn't phase me. I love my family. I know what they do. That didn't phase me. So I'm just sitting there just laughing and talking, or I'm standing rather laughing and talking with them. And I happened to be standing near her. And she said to me something so, so amazing. She said, your light, you were just shining so brightly over me. I said, when was I shining so brightly over you? She said, there was this light of glow just glowing all over you. And I didn't, wasn't saying anything. I was just standing there laughing and talking with them. But she said, there was a light that was just shining so bright off of you. That touched my heart. I wasn't condemning my, 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 my cousin. I didn't say anything about anything. I was just standing and enjoying them. But the light of Jesus Christ was shining through me. And she said the light was so bright. And she said after that, she started thinking about God. And, and long story short, tur she turned her life, life around. And she'd been through so much. See, all God wants is somebody to let the light shine. He's going to do the work. All he's asking us to do is let a light shine. God spoke this to me. He said, daughter, he said, I'm the hope of the world. I'm not asking my people to give the people hope. I'm the hope. All I want my people to do is let the light shine. And saints of the most high, when you let your light shine, People are going to see it. That's the word of God. They are going to see the light. And the hope of Jesus Christ is going to come in and they're going to be changed. Take your dimmers off. Stop living any kind of thing to make yourself feel good. Live holy. Stop making excuses about your lifestyle. Live righteously. Take those dimmers off and just be lights, okay? I love you guys so much. Let me pray for you. I hope you've enjoyed this message. My heart's just so moved because I just want everybody to live like Jesus. I want to be like him, and I desire that every us as believers will live our lives pleasing to him. Amen. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you, I bless you, and I exalt you for the listeners. Father, I thank you that your word will go back, go out, and you said it will not return void, but it will accomplish what you've sent it out to do. So, thank you for letting this word just saturate the souls of your people. Thank you for putting it on their hearts that they will truly be lights for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Father, I give you praise, I give you thanksgiving, I give you glory for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.
I'll be with you again on next Wednesday. You be blessed. I love you. Bye-bye.